Hello and welcome to my channel. Please subscribe to my channel and turn notifications on so that you can get the notification about my new tutorials. So we are going to start with the new series which is called PF Sense. Um, we look into getting started with PF Sense. So when I'm talking about getting started, uh, what we are going to look at is we are going to look at what is PF Sense. Of course, it's an open source firewall. And then we are going to look at how to start with it, how to download and how to install with it. So just to give you an overview, PF Sense is an open source firewall router, um, which is a computer software free, be, uh, based on FreeBSD, of course. And basically it is supported by NetGate. Uh, if we talk about the history of PFSense, so PFSense project was actually started in 2004 um, and it was a project by Chris and Scott. These are the two people who started this project and first release of this PFSense was in 2016. And the name was derived from the fact that the software uses the packet filtering tool. So that's why it is named as PFSense. It is configured and managed via web GUI, which is a good part of it. Um, it has lots of feature which you can work on. You have open source packages available which you can add in. So we are going to talk about first basics and then maybe we'll cover the advanced topics about it. So how to Start with PFSense, of course. First, you need to download PFSense, which you can download from the link, which I have pasted over here in my slide. And of course, I'm going to put it in my description. So you can simply just go to pfsense.org slash download to download the PFSense. PFSense is available uh, in two different versions, uh, AMD 4 and NetGUI. So we are going to talk about AMG, AMD 64 bit. Um, you can download USB MemStick version of the installer or you can download ISO installer. Um, then of course you can burn it to USB drive or you can just burn it to CD drive and then you can just simply load it into your hardware system. If you are going to test it in virtual lab, of course this ISO can be re uh, simply mounted to your CD drive of your virtual machine. Uh, of course, about the installation, we are going to discuss later in this video tutorial. If you want to see the comparison between different firewalls, of course, uh, I have taken some information of the slides from Wikipedia, so you can even look into the comparison. I did not want to put it over here because that would be quite long. I don't want to make this tutorial a little longer for this comparison sheet which you can simply read at this URL which again I'm going to put it in my uh, description of this video. Now what we are going to do is we are going to look into the installation of PFSense but of course before that we'll see how we can download it. So to download it you just need to go to https www pfsense.org slash download, all right? And then over here, if you look over here, the latest stable version, which is available, uh, it's 2.4.5 P1. You have capability to download AMD64, and you have capability to download NetGate ADI. Let's talk about AMD64 bit. You have USB MemStick installer or you have CD image ISO installer, as I said earlier. So you can just simply click on this, download, and you don't need any further action uh, to be done. I would not download this completely because I have already downloaded this image. It's not that big. It's 372 MB. So I'm going to cancel this. And of course, I'm going to use which is already downloaded. So once the download is complete, you will have your PFSense into zip format. You can use WinRAR, you can use any other uh, 
extracting tool i use normally 7zip and you will just simply extract it and this extraction process is really simple you know that so i have already extracted this and you can see over here my pf sense is already extracted in iso image next step is to create a virtual machine of course in my lab environment if you have physical machine you will use that and i'll just load this disk over here as iso i'm going to use spf sense i have already created a directory for pf sense in my virtual machine directory i'm going to use two processors two cores each you can start with 256 mb but for my testing i'm going to use 1 gb based on your processing what you are expecting on pf sense of course you can do here and there about memory what you need i am going to use my bridge adapter first for pf sense you need at least at least two adapters so what i am going to use over here is one bridge which will give me internet on that interface and other i will use host only which i have created on my vmnet 2 with 172.16.1 range so we are going to go next create a new virtual disk i am going to use it this way now before i finish this wizard what i'm going to do is i'm going to add another virtual adapter over here host only and not even host only i would use this one which i have newly created as i said that i have 172 lan segment after finishing this wizard, I would like to power on my virtual machine. And if you see over here now, as a process, what it would do, it would load the files. First, it would install FreeBSD operating system. And then once FreeBSD operating system is done, it will give me the prompt for the wizard to install PFSense automatically. I don't need to do any changes in it. It will connect my LAN adapter, it will connect my WAN adapter, and rest of the things would be done at the boot process itself. What we would need to do is we just need to follow the wizard to install PFSense. So now if you look over here, it has copied the file FreeBSD is installed. If I um, exit from this wizard, it will be FreeBSD, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to click on accept. Now I'm going to install PFSense on top of my FreeBSD without changing anything. I'm just going to install it. It will take it its time, of course. It will copy the file, fetch them, copy them over here from the ISO it will fetch, of course, and then copy them. Then it will verify the checksum. It will do the extraction of the distribution files, and then it will do the installation. Once the installation is done, you will see that van adapter and the lan adapter both has automatically received the ip addresses later in upcoming tutorials we will look into it how we can change the ip addresses how we can add more interfaces how we can configure it in a different way but for the time being we'll go with the flow and follow the visit now my installation is complete if i would like to change anything manually i can do it but as i said i would go with the default configuration over here so now the installation is complete now i just need to reboot the machine and of course while rebooting what i'm going to do is i'm going to remove my disk drive just to make sure it is not booting it from there so now installation is complete this is the first boot of this PFSense firewall. Now you will see its process. And then once it is booted up, you will see my LAN and WAN adapters are already configured with some IP addresses. We will see in the later phase of this tutorial itself. Just in few seconds, I would say.
so now you see it has automatically taken the default ip address of my bridge and on the other end it has automatically taken the ip address of 192.168.1.1 which is actually pre-built in it so once you have installed pfsense it will automatically configure the ip address of your lan interface to this but of course in my scenario i, I have ip address of 172.16.1 so what i'm going to do is i'm going to change it how i would do it i would select option two which says set interface ip address and i would select lan now over here if you see it is asking me to enter the new lan ipv4 address i'm going to enter it it is slash 24 let's say now it says for a lan press enter for none so it says for a van enter the new lan ip address of course i don't want anything for van i just need to enter the upstream gateway of course if it's my van but as it is my lan i don't need to do anything i don't want to set up ipv6 it says do you want to enable the dhcp server on lan i would say yes of course uh, so that if my vms connect to this they will automatically get the ip address from 172 range um, enter the start address of ipv4 client addresses so i'm going to use 172.16.1. let's say 65 let's keep 64 up to 64 as reserve for static ips and then 65 onwards if i want to keep it afterwards now enter the end range so i would enter the end rate range as 172.16.1.240 or 250 let's say or 249 all right and do you want to revert to http as the web configurator protocol let's keep it as no over here or let's keep it yes you see now it says that the ipv4 lan address has been set to 172.16.1.2 is uh, 1.1 slash 24 now if i want to access this of course i would need a machine in the same range the machine which should have same ip address range so this is the installation now we will bring up one machine with host uh, only adapter of vmnet 2 so that it should receive the same ip address and then we will access this from the web interface So to further test it, what I have done, I have brought up my machine, Windows 10, which is laptop 01, LPT 01. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you that I have only NAT adapter over here, which is of course connected to internet. I have connectivity to internet. I'm going to do something. I'm going to add another adapter over here, which is basically from VMNet which should get my IP address automatically from my firewall as we set up DHCP on the firewall interface so now I'm going to change it to VMNet02 and I'll click OK so I just wanted to show you without further setting up anything I would be able to browse to internet from this machine without doing any configuration as i said on the pfsense because pfsense is by default configured to get your van connected to internet and lan ip addresses would be routed to internet using the van port so what i'm going to do over here is i'm going to change the name just for my understanding to host only and let's go to command prompt and if you see over here 
now my IP address has come to this machine automatically as 172.16.1.65, which is my VM NAT adapter. What I'm going to do over here, now I'm just going to disable this NAT interface and we will see if we have internet connectivity or not. I'm going to ping Google DNS and you see I can reach it, but I would not be able to browse it. The reason being this interface is not configured for DNS, if you see over here. So I would prefer to put up a proper DNS over here, which is right now it is using the default gateway as DNS, but I would prefer to put let's say a proper DNS over here. And this can be as per my uh, network. All right, so let's launch our browser and try to browse anything. All right, and as you can see, we have internet connectivity over here. Now let's do one thing. Let's open our firewall. And firewall would be accessible on the local interface, which is LAN. So default credentials for firewall is admin and PF sense. And you see now it has taken me to the main page. And so what we are going to do is we are going to just follow this wizard over here. Uh, I am going to keep the same name, domain, everything. I'll keep the same. I can set up a primary DNS over here and I'm going to set this. I can use my local uh, DNS also, of course, but currently I'm going to use this way. And I'm not going to change anything. If I want, I can change the time zone or everything from here, but let's keep it the way it is. You can, of course, set it up according to yours. Uh, requirements uh, no changes over here I'll just keep it as it is this is my LAN IP if I want to change that I can do it um, of course admin password I need to change all right and then it will require me to reload this pfSense firewall so but at this point of time, you have seen how we can go about this. Now the last step would be to just check for updates. I can check for updates from here or I can just finish it off. I don't need to check for updates because this is the latest version of um, the PFSense which is available. I have downloaded today itself. So we don't need to check for updates. But if you feel that you have a uh, installer which is a little older, so you should do it. But now, as I said, we are we we selected to reboot the appliance. So of course, it would be rebooting the PF sense over there. If you want, we can come over here and we can just simply see this process over here also for the reboot. But meanwhile, once the reboot is done, you have your PF sense up and running, and you can see your WAN interface is connected on this and your LAN interface is connected on this and then you can see your CPU utilization and stuff on this dashboard. So this is all from this tutorial. We look into other specs and the functionalities of PFSense in later tutorials. Thank you so much for watching this walkthrough. Please use the comment section below to let me know if this solves your problem or this is what you are looking for. And to discuss more about any of the technologies which I'm talking about. Thank you and stay blessed.